Howdy! Welcome back! So glad you stopped in. Today we're making queso chicken. This is a good one. It's easy, but it's not a fast one. But it, it can be. If you used a rotisserie chicken or already cooked chicken breast, it would be a lot easier. I'm using thighs. Now I have skinned the thighs. You can bone them if you want to. It's real simple. Thighs easy. There's one bone. One bone. You cut the cartilage and the bone pops right out. But I want the bone in. This is taco seasoning. Yes, mine's in a big one like this. You can get, all you need is one package of taco seasoning. And you're just going to generally, generously, generally, generously throw it all over the chicken and pat it in and pop your chicken in. Now, you'll notice that it looks pretty bad in my pan already. Well, that's because I started without you. All right. I know, but you know, what are you gonna do? You gonna sit here and watch it grow? I didn't think so. Okay. But once the chicken's done, the rest of it goes real fast. So the lid on that, this really doesn't take that long. Chicken takes about mm, five to ten minutes on each side. Okay, let's get rid of this because this is a key dirty chicken. Alright, so while we got this going on. Let's talk about some other things. And I'm going to move this plate of chicken over here. That's the first plate I've already done. All right. We're going to talk about some other things today. I'm addressing some uh, viewer questions. First one is um, about onions. There's so many different kinds of onions. How do I know which onion to use? All right. Well, we're going to start with God bless America, I did this backwards. Okay, no problem, no problem, no problem. burn my board uh, or it could burn my hand it doesn't matter okay the five most common onions hang on all right onions basically the most common onions is five main groups of onions there's your scallions which are your green onions those, you know, you use the ends for color. You can't make uh, any kind of Asian stir fry or any kind of Asian dish without green onions. That's the most common. Then you have spring onions. Spring onions look like a green onion, only they're a little bigger. They're these onions that are picked early when they first start to develop. That's how you get spring onions. The difference is they'll taste like these, but they'll have a um, not as sharp a taste. Alright, after some massive technical difficulties, we're back again. I put the towel under the board as y'all saw a while ago. It was still my, my stove, you know, it's a commercial stove, so it's really, really hot. This is what happened to the towel. Burned it. And then it burned through and this stuck, so then I had to scrub the whole burners down and all that kind of stuff. So I'll move the onions over here. As we were talking about green onions uh, or scallions, everybody loves those. You have to have them for Asian food. They're awesome. They're good. You know, that's that's what they're for. Spring onions. Same thing as these, only picked real early, and they're bigger. Um, and they're milder. Okay, now but the three basic onions. You got yellow, you got purple, and you got white. Here's the difference between the two and when most people use them, or how they're used. White onions, used a lot in uh, Tex-Mex and in Mexican dishes. Um, the reason is they, they have a thinner skin, they're tenderer onion, they're very good in like fresh salsas, stuff like that because they're mild, they're not a sharp hard bite, they're a sweeter onion. 
That's an appointment. Very good if you're doing salsas, raw salsas, stuff like that on top. Red onion. Red onion is my personal favorite. Um, got the board is still hot. Uh, the red onion is my personal favorite. It's used best in raw applications, like in salads, you know, things like that. You can cook with them, no problem. They, they're, they're a, a little bit sharper than uh, the other two. They have a strong bite to them, but they lose their color. The more they cook, they lose their color. So you're not really, I mean, if you're using them for color, for the red color, use them in uh, salsas, use them in uh, chutneys, um, salads, things like that. They're much prettier. This is the standard. That's the standard right there. All, almost all onions used are yellow onions. It's the most popular. 90% of all onions grown in the United States are yellow. And then you can get into like Spanish onions, Vidalia onions. We're in Texas. We're in South Central Texas. So what we get are what's called a Texas 1015. It was developed by Texas a and University. The 1015 is when you plant the seed, if you're planting from seed and not transplants. That's October 15th, 1015. That's why they're called that. They're much larger and much sweeter than most onions. They have a good, uh, you know, their skin is good. It's, it's an easy peel. They, they caramelize real well. They've got a good sugar base to them, good sugar content in them. All onions have sugar in them. That's what gives them that caramelized look. And we're going to caramelize some onions in just a minute. Uh, so anyway, I hope that helps you. White onion, salsas, raw, like on top of enchiladas, things like that. You can cook with them, too. They cook well, too. They're a sweeter onion. This is Of all of them, this is the sweetest onion, probably. Red onion, best use raw it's the harshest of all the onions the strongest onion um, it loses its color when you cook it so if you want it if you're using the red for the color which is what most people do uh, you want to use it in salads salsas stuff like that your standard go-to onion good old-fashioned yellow good old yellow it's the American standard right here of onions then you also have shallots which are little onions that are like this and they're, they're a little harsh compared to those. And the cool thing about them is they have garlic a garlic taste to them. Because garlic is an onion, too. They're all members of the family called alliums. A-L-L-I-U-M-S. Uh, and, um, and right now is September, end of September, 1st of October. You need to be planting your garlic now for harvest in June. Hang on just a second. I'm going to flip the chicken. I'm right here. I didn't go nowhere this time. Set this, set my towel on fire so I don't have a towel now. Sizzle, 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 sizzle. Oh yeah, perfect. Perfect. All right, we'll get back to the chicken in a minute. It's right there. See, look, here's what it's going to look like when it's done. That's not blood, that's juices. Chicken has juice in it. And all meats do. And that's why when you cook any kind of meat, not hamburger meat, but like a roast, steaks, uh, ribs, uh, ham, not so much, uh, chicken, when you finish cooking it, you need to let it set for about 5-10 minutes. And that relaxes it because it gets all bound up when it's hot and then when it cools off it relaxes and then all the juices soak back up into the meat and that's how you end up with moist tender meat like a turkey you don't have dry turkey if you do that all right so anyway these are the onions hope that helps you American standard yellow is what we're going to be using today let me get rid of all this because when I was setting the board and towel on fire these rolled into the other side and they caught on fire that's why you see the black on them another thing with reds always try to get the squattier looking ones the flatter ones the flatter the onion the sweeter the onion just saying and you can save the skins to put in your stock instead of wasting onion in your stock but you know that's up to you it depends on how big your stock bag is you have in the freezer. We've talked about this before, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, 
So now let's go back to making chicken, queso, queso. Who does not like cheese and chicken and rice? Oh, so nice. So we're going to do that. So I'm not even going to shut you off this time. We're just going to move. Moving, moving, moving. Keep those doggies moving real hard. Now we're going to see if you're set up right. Yep. Okay. I don't care if you can see me as long as you can see the food. All right. So. All right. Another thing about cooking meats. Another thing about cooking meats is don't use a fork. Always use tongs. And the reason for that is you stick a hole in it and let all the juices out. So all I did was take a little oil, I used olive oil, you can use vegetable oil, you can use canola oil, you can use sunflower oil, whatever kind of oil you use. This is olive oil. Well, I can't get that one to pick up. Gosh darn it, I'm having a rough day today ladies and gentlemen. I have had a day like this all day since I got up this morning. Tripped and fell, getting out of bed, hit my head. So there you go. And from there it's just downhill. So we've got the chicken done. Now you look at that pan and you see, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with that? Well, you can use water. You can use water. You can use chicken stock. I'm going to use wine. And we're going to deglaze it. We're going to deglaze it. And what that means is, you're relaxing all the stuff that on the bottom. All that stuff that you think looks like yucky on the bottom, that's where your flavors are. That's all your flavors are in here. All right? All your flavors are in here. Now, this is going to be, I want to get it deglazed before it sets up. You've got to do it while it's still hot. Okay. And believe it or not, the alcohol has already cooked out of here. Did you see that big old rise of smoke when the when the rind hit it? Wine, rind. When the wine hit it, that's the alcohol evaporating out. So it's already gone. So there's no alcohol in here. All right. So this, see it's still bubbling. This is good. Yeah, that is real good. So we're going to put that over there because that's for the sauce. So now we're going to do our rice. Oh, so nice. Maybe. Oh, yeah, it is on. Okay. We're going to do our rice. And the way we're going to do the rice is, I got a little bit of bacon grease in the pan from breakfast this morning. So you, hopefully you have your, your baggies of rice. Remember early on when we first started getting together, I told you I had to do the rice and freeze it so you always had ready to eat rice. Well, that's what this is. This is one of my bags of rice. If not, you want about a, a cooked cup of rice so you would make your rice and you can use instant rice if you want to and combine it all together at the last second but we're not going to do that all right so to the pan let the pan get a little hot and i'm going to throw my rice in okay there we go and if you got still got a big frozen blob of it that's okay just it'll thaw trust me try to break it up into smaller pieces so it thaws quicker all right, okay, all right, so there. we're gonna let that go. That's trash. All right, that's trash. Okay, so now we've got our chicken. We're gonna move it over here to see, so it still stays warm sitting on the stove. And we're going to get the rest of us going. Okay, so for the rice, oh, it's so nice. We'll have another little mini lesson because that's cilantro. It's the wrong time of year here to, to plant cilantro. I gotta wait till it cools off. It's way too hot to plant cilantro right now. Cilantro grows in the winter time. So I bought this at the grocery store. How many of you buy cilantro, bunches of cilantro, parsley, uh, dill, basil, or rosemary, thyme, and you use it once and then you throw it either back in this 
little plastic bag that you can put. Never use produce bags when you buy produce. That's horrible. It causes them to sweat and they will not last even a half as long as if you used them plain. So just use it plain. We're just letting the rice kind of fry up a little bit and, and thaw out. Okay, and my, yeah, I'm dangling it it's over here. Isn't that pretty? All right, I've already washed this. Okay, so take the tag off. All right, but how can I keep this fresh? Think of cut herbs. Think of cut herbs like a cut flower. Just like if you bought flowers. If you go to the grocery store and buy one of those big, pretty bouquets of flowers, what's the first thing you do when you get home? You put them in water, right? Well, you're going to do the same thing with your herbs. Only, you have to remember, when you buy these in the store, these were cut, like, weeks ago. So, the cut on, the cut on is already healed over, right? So, you want to kind of grab them and go up, not far, about, about that far, about that far, and cut all that off. That can go in your compost heap. Then with the fresh cut, you put them in a glass of water and then set that in your refrigerator. Or you can set it outside, but it'll last longer in the refrigerator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some, because we want some of these. We're going to use that in our rice. So let's move that over there. So, fresh cut. Boom. That goes into, uh, that, no, that's not going to go in compost. That'll go into stock. So, I'm going to put those over there for now from a stock. All right, so we got the rice doing its ricey thing. And I'm going to chop up some cilantro. And, okay, I hope you can see this because I'm not putting my board back up there. When you take the cilantro or any herb, it's called, you're going to make a chiffonade. And basically, you bunch them together as tight as you can and then roll them. Roll them up. Like you're rolling a cigar, okay? Then you, then you hold them down and start chopping. I'm not going to tell you how to do this because you should already know. We've already covered chopping a lot. What's this called? Bonus points. It's called walking the knife. Okay. There we go. Walk it around. Walk it around. Walk it around. Now, I know we've discussed this before, but when do you add cilantro and parsley to a dish? At the very end. You add it now, you might as well have not put it in there. You won't have the color, it'll turn black, and you won't have the flavors. So, it's an aromatic. It's what's called an aromatic. It's, it's there for the aroma and the last minute touch of texture. Look at these big rice balls. We're not making Asian rice balls, although we could. Although, next week, Monday, I think, if all goes well in the world, I'll be doing a video on um, uh, eggs. The incredible edible egg. There's so many, you gotta think outside the shell when it comes to eggs. All right, now there's not a lot of oil in here. I don't want a lot of oil in here. And what I'm going for is not a color. It's, it's not gonna turn brown on you. If it does turn brown on you, you burned it. All right, but I'm going for a smell, and it should smell kind of nutty, you know, kind of nutty tasting, or nutty smelling. Okay, so, cilantro's off to the side, we're going to add some onion, when you cut an onion, always leave the root in on last. Uh, on your green scallions, you know, your green onions, if you trim up the roots on them, just leave a little bit of root on them and set those in water. Not only will they stay fresh, but they'll grow. That's right. You can take a little dish of water and set your end of your celery stock and it'll grow. All right. One. And there's two. Okay. So now we're going to add some onions and some garlic. That's easier. And we're just going to rough chop the onions. No, this isn't fancy. We don't need fancy perfect dice. Unless you're OCD about that kind of thing. And then you can get your handy little chopper out and do it that way. Walk it 
down a little bit. Walk it down a little bit. And again, we're using the handy dandy yellows. Remember, 90% of everything grown in the United States is yellow. Uh, on our farm, we grow yellows, we grow the 1015s, and we grow um, reds. If you get a little cilantro in there now, it's not gonna hurt anything. That's plenty. Say that, I might use that in the sauce. Who knows? All right, and then we want a can of, what's my favorite? Mexican style diced tomatoes. And this is the rice we're making right now. The chicken is going to set on this and then it's gonna have a queso sauce on top of it. And if you're using instant rice, you don't have to go through all this. You can, well, you can do this, but you're gonna, you can put it all together and put it in the oven. And if you're using boneless chicken, cut it into chunks and, and I like to brown it off first in the taco seasoning because I like the taste of it. Okay, so. Now I'm not gonna add a whole lot of seasoning to the rice because the chicken has taco seasoning on it. This is gonna set, that's gonna set on here and then we're gonna make the big queso sauce, so yeah. Right now we're just making a quickie sort of Spanish rice. It's not real true Spanish rice, but it's just a, a good version of it for this. And remember this doesn't take very long because the rice is already cooked. You've already cooked it. transfer it to the pan. If you wanted to uh, put it in uh, a big giant skillet, uh, that would be good for presentation. If, you have, if you're like me and have the big cast irons, that's, that's the way to go. All right, and you don't want a lot of rice, you just want a little rice. Just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. The rice, if you like lots of rice, make lots of rice, common sense. We don't eat, uh, my husband doesn't eat a lot of rice. He eats brown rice and this was white rice. You could use brown rice, but I have white rice in the freezer, so that's what I use. All right, so now. Now we're gonna take our chicken. See if I can do this without burning myself again, okay? And we're gonna just kind of nestle it in there. There's a flat side and a rounded side to a, a thigh. It's easier to set the flat side down, obviously, but some people you have to tell that to. Okay. Just getting nestled in there. This is just a package of, of thighs, and all I did was take the, the skin off of them. You don't need the skin on it for this. Only time I really leave the skin on my chicken is when it's going on the pit, or if I'm frying it, which I don't do very often, or oven frying it up there because I'll eat that one later. All right, and then we're going to take these wonderful juices and go, don't waste anything, just throw it right back in there with it. Okay, so now what we're waiting on, now all we need is our uh, sauce. So I guess that's why you're here, is to learn how to make queso sauce. Let's get this done. Ah! Sorry, that's a chicken. The chicken comes out of me from time to time. Okay, so remember we deglazed and got all the good stuff that you said looked like yuck? It's not yuck, trust me. It's good stuff. That it's good stuff. All right, and to this, to this, I'm going to start with, oh, I forgot the cilantro. Oh, oh well, we'll just put some on it like that. Oh, 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 oh. And we'll, we'll garnish with the rest of it. If you, see, I forgot, common sense. Oh, well, I can put it on at the end. Put a little there just to, blend that in and then I'll go further down. All right, so first thing we're gonna do for the sauce is our queso. I'm using jarred queso. You can make homemade queso, but you know, this was two bucks versus, you know, five bucks and how many hours to make a queso. And you know, like everything else, I can't, oh, there we go, came right open. Okay. I'm going to just dump the queso in here. But wait, there's more cheese coming. Don't get despaired. 
And, okay, if you don't want to do this, fine, don't do it. Just pour the jar of queso right over the chicken and you're done. You can call it done. But, you know, there's always a better way. You can always make it a little bit better. And that's what we're doing, is making it just a little bit better. Look at that. Look at that queso on the, on the lid. Get that out of there, too. You notice I'm using the same spatula for all of it because why not? All right, get that in there. Get that in there. Get that in there. All right, get it mixed up. It's gonna turn in every color, but it'll get pretty again. Trust me. Trust me. Have I led you down the wrong path yet? Nope. And you know the funny thing about cooking is that you need to remember is one, you need to have fun and enjoy it. Okay? Number two, we are not disarming nuclear weapons here. We will not destroy the planet. We will not blow up anything. So if we make a mistake, oops, oh well. You know, it's, consider it a happy accident. Who was that painter? Bob Ross. Happy little accident. I love him. Okay. We want this on low. We don't want to cook it too much. This is Piccadilly Gallo. You can make your own. Why bother when my grocery store makes excellent pico? Put as much or as little as you want, or don't put any. Common sense tells you. All right? So I'm putting about a half a container of that in there. Remember, too, you can always add two, but you can't take away. Okay. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of milk, or half and half. I don't have any. No, I don't have any half and half. Or evaporated milk would work. Just a little milk to it. And if you don't want to flick stuff out, turn it upside down and, and roll it on the bottom. That also keeps stuff from sticking. Same thing with this spoon. Turn it upside down. And you won't send stuff flying everywhere. All right, this is starting to look good. Starting to look good. Starting to look good. Give it just a touch of heat more. All right. Now we're going to get ready to garnish it. These are black olives, just plain old large black olives, California wrap olives. When I go to the deli and buy expensive calamatas, my favorite, for something like this, no, because you're cooking them in, so what's it going to do? Why waste good money on stuff that, you know, if you're going to buy expensive ingredients, and trust me, when I cook for me and for my clients, it's a lot of high-end, over-the-top, you know, but the reason, um, but that's because they pay for it and you can taste it. But I'm not going to waste something. This is just diced green chilies. Put in what you like. If you don't like diced green chilies, don't put diced green chilies in. If you like mushrooms, you could put mushrooms in it, I guess. Um, yeah. And then we're going to put in some black olives. Best way to do black Don't buy the sliced ones. Buy the whole ones. Fitted. Buy the sliced ones. You're paying to have somebody else do that. Look how easy this is. And this is more authentic and rustic looking, which is, this is a rustic dish. This is not a, you know, five-star restaurant dish. This is what would be called peasant food. The polite term is rustic, but it's actually peasant food, so. Thank you for noticing that I have lost a lot of weight. Some of you should have commented on that. Uh, yeah, I have. Thank you very much. 20 pounds. Not by choice, but it's just happening. So, hey. I'm not dieting, so don't ask me what I'm doing because I'm not doing anything. And if you're afraid to get your hands into food, maybe cooking's not your thing. Because the best way to cook is with your hands. You feel the texture. You know what it feels like. All right. So here a minute. Wash my hands. All right. And I 
saved some of both of these and some uh, pico. I'm not going to use pico, but the, this and this I saved to throw over the top when we're done. Now, I hope y'all stick around because this afternoon I'm going to be making dessert because you can't have a good meal without a good dessert. I'm going to be making um, a caramel apple cheesecake crisp in a slab. So, you want to stick around for that one. This is super easy. Okay, so I'm cleaning out the fridge and I've got all these little partial packets of cheese. What's a perfect way to do it? Just throw it all in there. Just get, it's a good way to clean out your refrigerator with cheese. Because we all have them. We all have them. So let's just do that. Because what's queso with that cheese? And the more cheese, the better. Now I started with a white queso because I like that better, best. Again, I'm not adding any seasoning to this because we have uh, the all those bits that were on the bottom. That was your taco seasoning. Now, I don't know if I have any sour cream, but you know, sour cream would be good in this. I'm right here. I'm just looking for sour cream. Now I got mayonnaise. Nah, I don't think so. Nah, I think mayonnaise is not a good idea. And I got 15 different types of creamers in there. I'm going to add some more milk to it, though. I'm just judging it. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I'm judging my sauce. Cheek, cheek, cheek. Cheek, 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 cheek. You always want to keep it on a low, 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 low. We're not trying to cook this. It's already all cooked. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Oh, it's getting prettier by the minute, isn't it? All right. So now, we're almost done. We're going to add some more cheese to it. Because there's no such thing as too much cheese. People that say there's too much cheese is the same people that complain there's too much bacon. Never, never, ever heard it. Let's throw some cilantro in there, too. Yeah, I think I got the cheese right. See the, see the stringing of cheese? Oh, oh, oh. This is slap your mama kind of good. Oh, booyah, booyah. I think I'm gonna put some more pico in there though. Cause I, we like pico. I'll use all, oh, there you go. I'll just use all the pico. All right, we love pico. And again, you can make your own. In case you don't know what pico de gallo is, it's tomatoes, onions, and peppers with a little lime juice. And some people put cilantro in there. I don't put cilantro in mine because cilantro turns black after a while. Okay. I think we're done. We are done, done, and done. All right. So now, PSL resistance. Whoops. I just went from Tex-Mex to French, you know. Well, you know, Texas was under the French flag, too, so I guess that counts, too. Okay. So now we're going to take our sauce. Don't let a kid be under your feet. And we're going to use every last drop of it. Every last drop of it. Because who leaves any good sauce behind? Queso chicken. Put this over here for you. Queso chicken. My, my, my. Really good uh, crowd pleaser. And then over at the top, we're going to put some more little diced green chilies. All of our cilantro that we didn't use. 
whatever. And onions, there's some onions here, there's some cilantro here. And, uh, you know, whatever you got left over, just throw it over the top. If it's a big piece of cilantro, nobody cares. It's just to look pretty. Here, we'll take the big piece and we'll put it in the center. There we go. And work around it. Okay. And now, if I were taking this straight to the table, which I'm not, we'll, we'll have this for supper tonight and it's only 1.30 in the afternoon. So I'm not gonna do it now, but, oh, and I'm gonna put some more green olives over the top of it. Um, I mean, not green olives, black olives. Uh, I'm going to uh, slice up some avocado and put chunks of avocado on it too. Uh, but you don't, again, you don't wanna put that into the very last minute. So there you are, queso chicken. I use chicken thighs, bone in, but you can use boneless chicken thighs, you can use boneless chicken breast, or you can even use leftover rotisserie chicken to make this. I use jarred queso. This is, happens to be my favorite. Use your favorite queso or make your own. Or you can use cheese whiz, which is, anyway. Uh, I don't like that, but that's a whole other tangent. Uh, shredded Mexican four blend cheese, as much as you want. Um, avocados, uh, pico de gallo, diced uh, green chilies, uh, black olives, and a bed of rice. All sitting and smothered into a bed of rice. Oh, so nice. So this, I'm going to leave here and then I'll put it in the oven right before dinner to reheat it. So there you go. I hope you like this one. It's another good weeknight meal. Fall's coming, so this is really good. Come back this afternoon, and you will have, we'll make a, a the caramel apple uh, cheesecake uh, crisp. I'm sorry, I keep making it up as I go along. So I've been making up this recipe. As, every time I make it, I add to it or change it. If you like what you see, please hit like, subscribe, and share our videos. Let's get a big old neighborhood going. If you have something in mind that you want me to do for you, or show you how to do, or teach you about, all you have to do is let me know. Either leave it in the comment section below, on the Facebook, the Down Home with Lynn Facebook page, or um, send me a private email. I'm open. And y'all are the ones that decide what I'm going to do. Alright? Sometimes I know. But y'all make determine. I Every show is based off of what y'all want to see, and what you want me what I want to learn how to, I'm having a stroke today and I don't even know why. Alright, so glad y'all came. Hope you can stick around till this afternoon. I promise you don't have to pull weeds. I'll do that uh, in the garden. Come back in uh, this afternoon and let's make dessert. See ya!